the northern himalayas the second major physical division of india which i made a flow chart so that usually you can cover all the topics which are related to northern himalayas i know that northern himalayas is really a very lengthy topic but yes we need to go with that now the northern plains sorry not the northern himalayas the northern plains which are located on the south of the himalayas cover a very wide region it is nearly 7 lakh square kilometers when we discussed about the himalayas we discussed that it is present over 5 lakh square kilometers but here it is larger than himalayan region so it covers 7 lakh square kilometers and its length is 2400 kilometers similar to that of the himalayan length while the width width varies from 320 kilometers to 240 kilometers so the northern plains covers a region of 7 lakh square kilometers covering a length of 2400 kilometers while the width varies from 3320 kilometers to 240 kilometers the northern plains is a very productive land which is very rich of the soil cover which was been brought by the himalayan rivers as it is just at the foothills of the shivalik mountain ranges or the outer himalayas so it has brought all the alluvial soil brown down and deposited it at the lower level as we discussed earlier when the formation of the himalayas itself there was a large basin which was been created and resulted the covering of this one ultimately we got the most fertile plain land for india that is the northern plains so in the northern plains the first major part is major river streams are present here because they originate in himalayas and pass through the plain lands first one is the river indus the second one river ganga the third one river brahmaputra these three are the major river streams which flow through our country and the northern plains region next we also see that because of the river indus indus has five major tributaries indus is divided into five major tributaries in the state of punjab that is the reason why it is known as punj ab five rivers in hindi we call it as punch and up means the rivers joining together punjab region where it is the most fertile region and then moving on to understand actually we feel when we say the name of northern plains we consider that it is a very plain land and it is a flat land but actually northern plains is not a flat land it's not true it is not at all a flat land it has various variations of its land reliefs first one at the first level the very narrow level that is from 8 to 16 kilometers of width where it is been brought from the rivers which came from the himalayan region at the foothills of the shivaliks we find the rough stones the pebbled stones which got deposited there to 8 to 16 kilometers of a very narrow belt this narrow belt is known as the babar region this is the first region in the northern plains the first major land forms which we find in the northern plain part then when we move on down towards the babar land the rivers will be re-emerging out from the pebble stones downwards after they cross this 16 kilometers width land and then they create a swampy and a marshy track which is a very rough track of land which is present there that is known as the terai land this terai land has a huge forest cover and a variety of wild animals used to be present here before we got the partition of india and pakistan while india and pakistan got partitioned we got many people migrating from india to pakistan well in the vice versa pakistan to india also so as many people migrated from pakistan to india we need to provide an accommodation for them so they have cleared these forest lands 
during that period. So most of the forests were being cleared when the Pakistan partition happened. So the second major landform what we have here is the Terai Track. And moving on to the downwards of the Terai Track, we have the terrace land which is upper than the flood plains. And here you have all the older alluvium deposited there that is called the Bangar land. So the first land very narrow belt and covered with pebble stones that is Babar. After this Babar land you find the re-emerging of the rivers creating a swampy part and also making it a rough surface. So that region is called Terai, a marshy track and from then when we move downwards we find a land which is elevated than the flood plains which is like a terrace region that is having the older alluvium with it that is called a Bangar land and the last but not the least the Kankar the newer alluvium which was got deposited because of the movement of the rivers got brought it here and this is a very fertile part so this region is called Khadar or Kankar region so we have four major landforms here not the forms of the lands here we have fertility of the land also varying here Babar you don't have any fertile land Terai is good fertile Ka Bad Bangar and Khadar both are good and fertile land so the northern plain almost it has except the narrow belt it has the entire cover with the huge variety of the fertile plains because basically it is located on the south of the Himalayan mountains and the deposited soil alluvium which we got from the Himalayan rivers got deposited here. Let's have a brief recap of northern plains that is the northern plains existed in 7 lakh square kilometers. Its length 2400 kilometers. Its width varies from 320 kilometers to 240 kilometers. This is very productive and very rich in the soil cover of the entire Indian land and here we have major river streams like Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra while these brought the foothills, the alluvial soil, these rivers brought the soil towards the northern plains and Punjab is got its name because of the Indus tributaries merging into five major tributaries and called it as Punjab meaning five tributaries joining together here and this is a very fertile place. The entire landmass in the northern plains has been divided into four major parts basing on their texture and the nature of the land. The narrow belt just below the Sivalik ranges which is having pebble stones deposited there that is 8 to 16 kilometers of width that is Babar. While moving on downwards the rivers re-originate here allowing them coming under the Babar land and re-emerge here creating a swampy wet lands and marshy track when it rains how it creates a marshy rough surface in a similar way that is known as a terai where forest and wildlife was rich before the India and Pakistan got partitioned and later we have the terrace older alluvium which are like above than the flood plains there is no possibility of getting any floods here much so this is called Bangar while we have the new alluvium getting deposited here known as Kankar and this is also a very fertile land and this is known as Khadar. Overall we need to remember that it is spread over a very wide range and the most fertile part of India is northern plains having three major Himalayan rivers flowing through this one and contributing this land to be a most fertile land and very useful land for Indian agriculture. Most of the people living in these regions live or depend on agriculture. We also have many riverine lands forming up here. The world's largest riverine land, Majula, which is Brahmaputra riverine land, is the world's largest inhabited riverine land. So that is Majula. We need to remember this one. It is a very important landmark for India in the places of riverine lands. So riverine lands, the most important one. In, we need to remember is Majula. This was been created by Brahmaputra. This is a very fertile land and many of the people are staying here very happily. So this is the largest inhabited riverine land that is Majula. That's we have for the 
northern plains if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus